Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Howdy, everyone. It's episode 110 of the Human Factors Podcast. Uh, it's November 5th. Remember, remember, the 5th of November. Can't tell what Nick's been doing. And uh, you're you're listening to, maybe even watching, Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Wiley Rome, and I'm joined today by the baddest outlaw in the West, Mr. Blake Armstorff. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> Blake's just like, what is he doing? <laughs> I'm just trying to get a podcast done. I've been playing a lot of Red Dead. Okay, uh, so I'm your host, uh, Nick Rome. That's my name. We got we got some stuff to talk about today. Uh, I mean, just a few things. We've been gone for a couple weeks. Maybe we should say what's up. Yeah. So what's been going on, Nick? Um, well, I just meant we're back. We're, the show's not canceled. Don't worry. Uh, we're here. Uh, but yeah, what we're talking about today. Been two weeks and I forgot how to podcast, Blake. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to talk about how uh, self-driving cars people people want them to kind of focus on uh, you know young people saving young people's lives rather than old people. Thank goodness. And uh, wow, that's ageist of you. And then we also have the impact of politics on workplace productivity, which is very relevant, uh, especially with the midterm elections here in the United States uh, coming up tomorrow. Um, but first, I want to. C- talk about a couple programming notes here so welcome new listeners uh i'm sorry that you had to come in on this episode if you're new uh, but we do have the hfes 2018 coverage um and we have that audience survey that we asked you all to fill out it's in the description we want to figure out how to improve for next time what's useful what isn't uh we actually just had a meeting with hfes leadership about some of it so you know it's all getting fed back into them to see how we can improve for next time what types of things we can do differently what kind of things did we do right And we need your feedback. Um, Hey, Blake, did you know that we're on Spotify? We are indeed. And, uh, you know, we're also on YouTube, too. And uh, that's releasing basically every Tuesday around noon. Uh, So check us out there. Um, Oh, we got got some uh, exciting things to talk about here. Straight out the president's mouth. Well, you want to announce this? No, have at it, man. Okay. (laughs) I was hoping you'd go for it. Um, You put... In the show notes here, we're announcing a new giveaway. Another one. Another one. And What's it will it gonna be, be this time. Now? Well, you know what? You'll have to wait one week. Oh my god. I while we wait. set up the details. But we want to let you all know that we will be having a giveaway starting next week. Uh, it is something of substantial value that I think a lot of our listeners will find useful to have for sure. And uh it's not a shake weight. It's not a shake weight. Just stay tuned. Um there's a shake weight going around the office, that's why he said that. And uh, so stay tuned. We'll announce what it is next week and how you can enter and all that stuff. And then uh, coming up soon here, we have HFES Australia. That's later this month, November 26th through the 28th. We're going to have good old Mateo on the show, uh, Patreon subscriber and avid listener, avid Slack commenter. Uh, Mateo will be on the show to talk about all the fun things coming out of Perth. Um, And, you know, it's never too soon to start looking forward to other conferences like the healthcare symposium uh, ieee and kai so go check those out if, if any of those pique your interest please check those out so blake be here before you know it Jeez. uh i, I want to talk about a couple things today so i'm going to jump into banter first because i'm really excited about red dead redemption 2 do it what do you like about it uh or i guess for everybody else that may not may or may <laughs> not be into video games what is red dead redemption and why are there two of them so, uh, well okay so red dead redemption 2 is a is a video game created by uh rockstar san diego and they oh that's right yeah i met one of their developers over the weekend y- oh did you yeah yeah that's pretty fun uh so anyway they they've created this game which is a rootin tootin cowboy shooting kind of uh sim if you will and uh Best description i've ever heard it's basically <laughs> the sims but it's for cowboys it's like it's like wild west okay so anybody from rockstar is listening to this my my thoughts about this game are very complex because the first couple hours of the game i was like i want to like this so bad i don't know if i like it or not and then i hate that feeling when you play a new game and you're just like everyone says it's so good like how long yeah. do i have to stick with it and oh, when does it get good uh hang on really quick i mean I, I failed to mention this in the banter because I didn't write it down, but hey, look at our new studio. Oh, that's right. Do you <laughs> like the new 
new facade. <laughs> we got a new we got a new studio. We got Look, a TV. A, yeah, it's okay. a TV right there, and then there's some brick wall over here. It's nice. I like yeah. it. Anyway, the builders are really good. Red Dead Redemption Two. So I was really kind of dubious the first couple hours, and uh, eventually it clicked because this game is very disrespectful of your time in a way that <laughs> no other game has been. The first um, one was like that too, though. And, like, you have to do a lot of things, right? So, like, you can bathe your character. You have to ride that horse around a lot. Everywhere. The fast travel All systems the in this game are only one way. So, yeah. even if you go out, you have to ride back. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the game is just spent doing kind of mundane things like washing yourself. And you have to, like, actually scrub your body to, like, clean off your character. Or is it so you don't get, like, syphilis and gangrene or something? No, this is just to get the grime off of their face. Or if it rains, you can get it off that way, too. You have to shave your character's face if you don't want a long beard. Um, you have to feed your character if you don't want them to be underweight. And you have to stop eating if you don't want them to be overweight. Oh my goodness. Um, there are so many complex systems in play with this thing. And that's uh, just to live. And that's just to live. And wow. But, I mean, they're, they're there, but they encourage you to do them even though they don't directly. I mean, they do kind of directly impact gameplay, but it's, like, um, so minor that you could do it or Get not away with not having to actually go through it but i mean That's like a lot of design like cleaning your gun yeah i mean and there's talks about you know like the, the amount of effort like 100 hour work weeks by developers being put into this project like yeah i mean like these that's a whole like that but that's insane like especially if that's a minute detail it doesn't actually impact gameplay that much like crazy like the the big one is horse testicles the the horse testicles in the game actually shrink contract when you're going into a cold area or going into cold water like why do we need that level of detail that's insane like yeah so somebody somebody had to program that and there's a lot of detail in the game and i think some of that detail makes these experiences interesting. So let me just, I was talking with a colleague of ours around the office because they're playing it as well. And uh, actually Woodrow, he's been on the show. I, I, I can mention Woodrow. There you go. So Woodrow has been playing and uh, you know, we, uh, I, I got into a conversation with him. I went to a show and it's not something that I felt like it's not a checkbox that I wanted to check off. I just walked into the city and I saw a show was going on. So I walked in. Is this in game? This is in game. Okay. And gotcha. then, uh, and then I walk up, you know, and and you can like cheer or boo. Uh, and there was this guy who was catching bullets in his mouth, and <laughs> one of the guys in the audience gets up and says, "This is a lord of hor- this is a load of hor- load of horseshit." I can't, I can't say it literally. Uh, and so, <laughs> so he's like, "Okay, I dare anyone from the audience to get up here and shoot me, and I'll catch your bullet in in my teeth." And so no one got up. And so, of course, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll get up. But I bet you if I waited long enough. But it was a long wait. Like, I was waiting for someone else to get up. But I bet you if somebody else got up, they would. Anyway. Think about so, the amount of algorithms that are going on. Yes, I know. There's a lot out. there. There's a lot there. Everything that you'll see about this game is detail, detail, detail. Anyway, so I, I get up there. And he's like, okay, on the count of three, shoot me in the face. And I will catch it. And so I shot him in the face. And he died on stage. And the this show went on. Just very morbid. The show went on. Oh yes, yes. But I talked to Woodrow, and he's like, "I shot him, and he caught the bullet." Again, yeah. And I was like, "Okay, so you had a wildly different experience from me, even though it was the same kind of setting. You were kind of did the same thing, and then likewise, we, we like we both witnessed a cross burning by clansmen, uh, and that's a thing in the game. First off, and then what's funny is if you know you wait long enough." Um, they all catch on fire because they were burning a cross and they all catch on fire. And, uh, and by the way, vote tomorrow. Today is the fifth. If you're listening to the, if you're listening to this, just vote, just vote, do it, do it. It's important. Um, anyway, so you walk up to them after they're done burning and then they're like, can you help me out, sir? And it's like, well, no, you're, you're on fire. You, no, you're a racist. Like, and you're on fire. I don't help no, you. I'm not going to help you. And so he's like, you're going to regret this. And he starts like walking away to report me for setting him on fire or whatever. Cause I didn't actually do that. So I shot him in the head. Um, that is ridiculous. And looted his body. And then Woodrow had a very different experience with that too. Um, See, that's pretty crazy, but that's yeah. the beauty of like red dead and even like GTA, whatever number they're on now. It's, it's that open world experience. It could be so diverse depending on like what you do, where you're at at the time. Yeah. What time of day it is in the real world that you're running the algorithm and all that kind of stuff. Walked up to a guy. He was like, hey, can you help me out with my horse? I'm trying to put it on this horseshoe. I go, okay, sure. I hop off my horse. Walk up to him. Horse kicks him in the face. He dies. The horse runs off. What in the world? Yeah. So, wait. Is uh, 
I don't know how to ask this without sounding like a nutcase, but I'll just ask it this way. Do it. So is is Red Dead only like a single player thing or does it have a multiplayer mode or is it all in one? It will. Um, so it will have a multiplayer component later on. So it's not right now like open not, world, like you can right. run into Woodrow tomorrow on your not horse right now. and like wave and all that. Not stuff. right now. Okay. No. Um, but that's coming? But that's coming. We could yeah. rob a bank together or whatever, be outlaws of the West. That, that'll that be kind of cool. Yeah, so that's why you need to get it too and jump in with us. Yeah. Yeah, I just get so sucked into the video games, man. I, I can't even really, really <laughs> let myself play them. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, it sounds great because I loved the first one, which I didn't expect to because it was all like Cowboys and Wild West. But right. I was like, yeah, it's a, it's a rock star game. I'll have to give it a shot. And yeah. I, I literally did. I fell in love with playing it. Oh, you're going to love the second one. And plus all the memes are just great. Oh, so the good. The actual guy like so on a horse good. playing the game in his house. Oh, so it's, good. It's too good. All right. I, want, I, I took enough of the banter time. I want to get into what you have here. Football VR. What is this? Okay. So I had a we- – I don't really love football, but my – Actually, she's been on the podcast before and helped us out multiple times. Elise really loves the Packers, so we watch football at least every Sunday or at least once a week. But I was thinking, because I'm totally oblivious to how football works or like what the rules are or any of that stuff, and she was explaining to me that I guess every every time that like it's, like it's your possession of the ball, you run a play. And we realized that on some of the commercials, there's Amazon Web Services that are running at all times, collecting data and all these plays on the players, stats and stuff like that. And I was, and basically it came down to, in my head. I was like, well, really, football play, running football players is a multivariate problem that you set up some play you're going to run and you're having to deal with variables that you can't control for. But what if you're analyzing the footage like drive it into some kind of machine learning algorithm that you can make into a VR experience for football players to train in, could that impact the ability to make plays work better? And this is actually something I wanted to talk about with one of our colleagues who won't come on the podcast. Yeah. But um, they who shall not be named. They shall not be named unless they come on the podcast and they want to talk about football VR. Uh, but that was just a, an interesting application because I didn't realize that you know, Amazon was so tied in to the one the advertisement of the NFL, but also that they were like collecting a bunch of data that could be you know exploited and used for fun purposes like that. Yeah, I, I'm all for VR stuff, and and the data side of things is really cool too. I've actually been learning a lot about football over the last couple of months uh, because of an office mate of yours. Yep, uh, is really into college football. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep up. He gets so excited about it, and I get his, I get sucked up in this his excitement and enthusiasm about the thing. It's I'm not it's a sports funny to guy, watch, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's cool. I, I I really like the concept of being able to take that data and and basically put the players in a VR. So is this like a is this like an ad that you saw for this, or is this like something that they're doing? No, so the ad that I saw was basically that Amazon Web Services collects all this information on players, plays, basically just doing analysis of the video that it runs. And in my head, it was like, well, why don't they turn this stuff into like a VR game for one, but like a VR training system? So this was an original thought by this Blake This is an original Arnstorf. thought okay. by Blake Arnstorf. Yeah, no, Look it's not you. real. Look at you go. It's not real. Uh, yeah, because it literally is a multivariate analysis problem. Oh man, stats! Anyway, it's been too. It's been too long. Stats. Nerdery, yeah. Um, yes, that's my banter for the week. I got one more thing I want to chat about, and I do too. So you go ahead. Wait, what? what so I, I totally forgot about this, but I learned <laughs> how difficult it can be, or like, because I don't really deal with physical products that often anymore. But over last week, I had to get crutches because uh, I just I couldn't get around without them. And this is why the show was off the air, by the way. Just. Yeah. And so Thanks, setting, okay. setting them up was nearly was the most hilarious experience I've ever had because I nearly like I fell over once in a Walgreens parking lot like trying to set them up like setting them up for my height but it's one of these things that a crutch itself has three places that you have to set it up for your actual height for them to work so it was just because I'm one of those people that as soon as I open something I throw the instructions away right yeah so it's yeah. just it IKEA just, furniture yep. I'm out. Yeah, no, that's always my favorite, too, is putting something together like that. But yeah, so it, w- it was an interesting experience, like trying to figure out how to put these things together in a quick and intuitive way without, you know, splitting my face open on the concrete. <laughs> if anybody's seeing this on YouTube, <laughs> I, can really I lost my mic. mic. <laughs> it's it's We're already off the rails, and we're only like, what, 10 minutes in or something? Yeah, like and this isn't even the off the rails section. Uh, no, the it's not the off the rails. Should I play the off the rails sounder? Hang on, where is it? Do you have it? It's there, is that it? Hang on, wait. Oh. 
<laughs> I think that's it. Anyway, that's that Catwatch too. It's Catwatch, which too. is going terribly. We're now separating them into separate rooms again. I feel like I have to talk about this every week. Anyway, yeah, we're separating them into separate rooms again. Uh, but the other thing I want to talk about, and I'll just mention it briefly since I know this we're this is really funny for me. Okay, yeah, do I, this. I'm like, <laughs> should I just hold it the entire time? Yeah, here we go. <laughs> 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 That'll do for yeah. Jesus. If you're if you're listening to this and you have no idea what's going on, just go and watch the just, YouTube. Just watch it for two seconds for, to see this. Yeah, I mean, we'll skip get a ahead. view and you get a laugh. Skip ahead to like ten minutes in and you'll you'll figure out why I'm like struggling. Anyway, um, the Jesus. Halloween stuff. I want to talk about Halloween stuff. So we. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't get the chance last week to talk about. Halloween stuff on the show, but uh, you know, some people get excited about dressing up. Some people get excited about the candy. What? I, some people get excited about watching me futz with my <laughs> stupid mic. Personally, that's my favorite. <laughs> anyway, the thing I get excited about is uh, actually setting up a, a really cool looking uh, Halloween atmosphere. So we live in an apartment right now because it's a semi permanent uh, situation, but. We, uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I just had a ton of fun making the environment like super special for the five kids that visited us because I set up like my Philips Hue bulbs outside and like uh, a laser light and, and fog machine. And I make the fog machine and the light change color as the kids were walking up and they'd get all spooked out. Some even didn't even like go up to the door. And so some got turned away. And then some left because the jumping spider scared them. It was just a fun time. That would be enough for me to leave for sure. But I ho- the are you jumping gonna- spider? Oh yeah, I hate spiders, man. Uh, are you going to put some of the videos up in the on the podcast? Maybe I got to. I got to go. I, you know, yeah, I can do it. I can definitely do it. Yeah, because it's awesome. Like literally, the it's it's crazy because you said that it was just for your apartment, but I mean, this is probably the most epic setup I've seen in a while. Because I've been to your house before. I had seen you know the thing for the black lagoon hanging out. The creature. The creature. The creature. Yep. But yeah, it's a, it looked really, really fun. If I had been a five year old kid, I probably would have been, would have been crying and screaming. You, you probably would have been crying and screaming yep. anyway. This uh, is probably true. Okay, this has gone on long enough. You know what time it is? What time is it? It's time for me to turn up the fader and hit the sounder. Yes. Yeah, it's time for Human Factors News. It's been a while, Blake. This is part of the show where we break down all the news in the field of human factors this is gonna be anything from uh, medical transportation psychology artificial intelligence virtual reality automation design cybersecurity. you name it but those are new i know i added a couple I like that design and cybersecurity. i know well, we're I... talking about none of those things today folks no we are talking about a couple things blake what do we got up first all right so in my re- mit released the results of a global survey of over two million people from 200 plus countries on the moral and ethical decisions that auto- autonomous vehicles should be programmed to make the survey reveals that general preferences include prioritizing human lives over animals, younger and healthier people over the elderly, that's awful, and saving more lives over fewer lives. People also preferred to spare bypassers who were obeying the law, so if they weren't obeying the law, maybe not, over jaywalkers. And the survey presented variations of the trolley problem, so a classic ethical dilemma that per- the asked participants to choose who to save in an event of an all out of control trolley endangering people. When it comes to autonomous vehicles, the software may ha- may have to prioritize whether to swerve into a group of people to avoid a head on collision or decide whether to save its own passengers at the expense of people's lives in another vehicle. Uh, as a quote from the article, the main preference preferences across the globe were pretty similar to the degree of universal agreed upon certainty said the release so most people agreed with these general survey statements nick this is kind of it's it's really great that it did such a <laughs> wide ranging survey but this is still hard to understand how we're going to tackle this problem because it's talking about i mean you're basically having to choose who lives and who dies and an algorithm's got to figure it out it's an uncomfortable it's uh, very uncomfortable it's it's very uncomfortable and we I, I feel like we talked about this on the show before when they launched have, yeah. when they launched the survey we talked about it It'd be interesting to revisit what the results are well now we're here um yeah it'd be curious to go back and listen to our predictions on that episode to see like what we talked about oh yeah i bet you we're, co- we're totally right uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> no we're probably which not. well i mean like i i the only instance in which i can see that we could have made a prediction that was correct was the prioritizing younger lives over older lives yeah because that's in the trolley problem now right? that, yeah exactly it's, it's like a common even human thing to do and, yeah and to be clear for everybody i i 
took this out of the notes. The results of this are actually being published in the Journal of Nature. It may already be done because this is from, I guess, two weeks ago now. Yeah, it's but, been a couple weeks. Yeah, so we've only got like this the very basic idea of what people thought. Then they break it down like variations from country to country and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, generally, people are going with what you would expect, right? So saving the young over the healthy or young and healthy over the elderly. Uh, you know, general trolley problem type results. Yeah. Um, this, uh, yeah. It's uncomfortable. So let's just talk about them. Um, the, let's, okay. let's talk about prioritizing human lives. First off. Yikes. Um, so in, they found that prioritizing human lives over animals was preferred. Okay. That's, that's a pretty blanket statement. It, okay, it, fine. It is. Yeah. But it, I almost expect that though. I do too. Right. Younger and healthier people over the elderly. Right. That's, that's again, like pretty, pretty straightforward yeah there's nothing really insane there the next one's pretty funny the the next one is uh it's 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 the the hallmark of a just society <laughs> jaywalkers be damned <laughs> Jay, jaywalkers <laughs> is your sol or or even cyclists who like run red lights you yeah. know like D- sol don't Sorry. break any laws the autonomous vehicles will enforce them yeah so i mean and and that makes sense too uh, i mean like i'm i'm on board for these as like sucky as it is to prioritize one life over another i'm on board for all these so far i'm having a hard time with like do you hit the dog you hit the human see for me it's like do you hit the dog or do you hit the cat like that's a tough choice oh good god dude. that's Easy a choice tough choice for me and then the the tougher choice is like how do you prioritize two podcast hosts we're podcasting in the middle of the street the autonomous car is coming just pick one. How does it? But but we're roughly the same age. Yeah. Same gender. Yeah. We have. We both have glasses. <laughs> Our physical characteristics we, are very very similar. Exactly. Yeah. You're a little bit more fit than I am. Does it prioritize your life over mine because you're a little bit more fit? I don't know. See, like this. These are the. These are like the nitty gritties that I want to get into. Like, where's this information? Do they not have that stuff yet? Because these are pretty broad yeah. strokes that confirm, like... Well, think about it, for it to even know that or to make that decision. Well, that's the next have point. To take so much more information in. That's the next point is what information are they basing this off of? Yeah. And I know right now we're at, a, at the conceptual phase of, like... I feel like it's just if imagery. It, if it had all this information, right? Yeah, so yeah. imagery, sure. But what if, you know, it linked into a connected smart system where it could tell our Fitbits apart? Um, and our GPS location that like tied all that stuff together. Like what factors is the autonomous vehicle using to make these decisions? This is tough. It's tough. Yeah. Could it do a biometric scan? And what if it found out that like I, so one person was a father of two and the other person was a single man. Exactly. Then it makes a decision based off of that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 There's a lot here. And what this does is it gives a good blanket statement for, the base algorithm, but there are, this is not where the, the, the problem is going to be. It's going to be when you do have that father or two versus someone of the same age who is not a father or mother for that case. Like, do we prioritize women's lives over men because they can give life? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I would say so. I Um, mean, it's, yeah, I I think we're still way too early to even be at that point because we're still dealing with like separating what things are visually like yes 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 versus human but, but when it comes to like when they're able to read more when it comes to ethics though like it's yeah. just gonna be how do you and we're going to eventually have to quantify somebody's life and that scares me a little bit because if that algorithm is not hidden and the quantity of my life the quality of my life the number attached to my living score Sounds like a bad episode of Black Black Mirror, honestly. It's where like the next one, yeah. you have right, yeah. I mean, we're giving them ideas, but yeah, we have this number associated with our life um, that this computer then uses to inform which one of us to take out, and the yeah. one with the lower score. Like, and and now we're getting into weapons of math destruction with like you know algorithmic bias and all that stuff, and it's just like true. I don't know. There's a lot of ethical issues here. I just wonder if. And this is probably just going to be a silly thing to say, but it's, it's my opinion, so I'm going to say it. Do it. I feel like we're we often focus on this like ethical and moral problem, 
Whereas what if we worked more on like, okay, auto autonomous vehicles have to be able to, you know, magically avoid things. Like wh what if we were working on ways that instead of dealing with, do I have to kill 20 people versus the two that like adding stuff into vehicles that are like fail safes that allow them to get further along in the process before you have to like get to the trolley problem. Maybe by that making the trolley problem a smaller version. Yeah, I can see that. Like right, we're, some go go gadget stilts on the cars. Right, yeah, yeah, something <laughs> ridiculous like that. <laughs> okay, I see where you're going or it for. Covers, I don't know. I like that approach. That's not the study. Uh, no, it's <laughs> not. It's not at all the study. No, but let's talk about that approach for a second because what you're saying is basically we shouldn't even be thinking like this. We shouldn't even be thinking which lives do we prioritize over the other. We're th take that out of the equation. We should just design it to not take a single life. Yeah, just all the lives. This is Keep like. Them. Yeah, this is like the absolute corner case where, you know, two lives have to be considered. Sure. Um, like, obviously, you can't design for 100% safety. Otherwise... Yeah, or else we would we'd be fine. Yeah, but this is... You're right. Like, let's... The, I, I, and I know there's a focus on that stuff, too, making it the most safe it can be, predictive analytics about, like, how to slow the car down if it's approaching an ambiguous yeah. situation. Yeah. It's one of those things, though, that, like... I feel like you'd have to almost change up how cars are, what we call cars, right? To make it something that would allow for like a higher level of safety. It couldn't just be the same design that we have now. It would right. be something completely different. Well, yeah. And, and, and you'd have to also redesign completely the infrastructure. You'd have to design yeah, the roads dedicated and lanes stuff. for autonomous vehicles yeah. or yeah, uh, underground tubes uh, for pipe dreams, literally. Um, yeah, <laughs> for Elon Musk, you know, like. By the way, are you free? Are that are you free on that day? I really want to go. What day is it? I think it's the eighth of December. If it's the eighth, I can't. <sighs> yeah, Bummer. can't do it on the eighth. All right, I'll we'll figure it out. He might push it. I don't know. Um, it's a Saturday, isn't it? Is it? Oh wait, it might be the tenth. Yeah, because I, cause I can't do it Saturday. I could do it probably the tenth if they well, playing hooky from probably work. Probably not. Playing no, because I have to, you know, work enough to get nah. them off. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll we'll see if it if it happens. Anyway, yeah. we're getting off the rails here. Actually, would we be getting on the rails if we went on to perhaps? Oh uh, yeah, getting on the rails here. The one, the one part of this that I do think is is the toughest is this last little bit they mention. So like. When it comes to autonomous vehicles, the software may have to prioritize swerving into a group of people to avoid a head-on collision or decide to save its own passengers at the expense of lives of others in another vehicle. Yeah. I think that's where the problem is really nasty. That is really nasty. Because how does it? Because that that's kind of getting to this biometrics thing and doing a lot of predictive work in the algorithm, right? Like, what if I, I knew I was going to kill somebody in a head-on collision? Not me, if I was an algorithm. Um, but if I swerved into this group of people, I could hit them in such a way that nobody dies. It's just like, how does it even start to compute that kind of problem? Right. It's just, I don't know. It's insane. Yeah, I don't know. This is less of a study in autonomous vehicles, but more in a study in ethics. It is, yeah. And that's really interesting to me because this type of study will inform how we, as humans, create algorithms that then impact the systems that we use. And that chain of command is always important to kind of trace back and say, well, where do we draw the line and what as a society do we think is right and wrong? And with the United States midterm elections coming up tomorrow, please go vote. So <laughs> this is one tie back for the whole episode. That's my one it, tie. Back. It'll be back again. Don't uh, worry. <laughs> one more time. Um, I bet you he says it in a second here. But I won't say when, so you'll be highly anticipating it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so, it's yeah, anyway. Seat. No, I, I do think, though, that that's it. I mean, can we trace this back to other things, right? I, I think we can. We were talking about this at Ergo X. Just because you can make a human run, <laughs> yeah, you know, an eight-mile or a three-minute mile, should you? Yeah, that's that's an interesting one. That one's that one's kind of weird, right? Because you're talking about the limitations of a human body too, and then wearing them out faster. Yeah. And then on this, this is like should but should we actually give people less power than we, than they have now? But potentially, I think this is the part that people forget, or maybe I forget too, because I'm I'm super nervous about autonomous vehicles, gigantically, mainly because of the the 
implementation of the system while people can still drive on their own. But anyway, that's that's a whole other topic. But I think people do forget that it's it's likely that accidents are less likely to happen if everything's autonomous. Yeah. We're just talking about how do you deal with the edge case that will eventually happen. Okay. I'm going to throw another wrench into this. Oh, you goodness. ready? I hate wrenches. No, no, no. You love this one. Okay. So there are certain pedestrian vehicles. Lime scooter. Birds. Birds. What are hmm. some of the other ones? Birds? No. Birds. I don't. Anyway, you have these pedestrian vehicles yeah. that people are littering all over the city. It's so bad. Throwing into, <laughs> into the lake. Into the lake. Um, what happens when an autonomous vehicle company owns something like that? Are they going to prioritize the customer who is not using their product? Let's say you have uh, an Uber and – or like even cars. Like think about it this way. You could either head on with an Uber or head on with a lift. A lift, and it's lift behind the wheel. Like would That's would lift so bad. Would lift head on with itself to avoid all the insurance that it would have to pay t- to somebody other than themselves? Would that or like would it go for Uber because they are then saving the life of two of their other passengers? Well you probably bring up another important implication of this whole thing is like they're there, of course, will be like the business level of algorithms. That's stuff. what I'm. That's what I'm gonna getting. Have at. to be like that government committee style of algorithms. Which yeah, going to be so behind the curve the way that we run things around here. But it's, it's I don't know how that's all going to work. But that's a good point. You don't want like and we're we're picking on Uber and Lyft just because it's easy to easy. do because they're, the, they're easy to the visualize ones, like, too. Killing the space, but it's it's like any of those systems, you know, like whatever autonomous vehicle system it is, uh, you wouldn't want them to be able to like pick. You know, their competitor over themselves or any of that, any of that guys. Yeah. Or would they, would they just bite the bullet to avoid like, um, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, man, that's tricky. Imagine having to budget that into your cost benefit analysis uh, of your that's company and tricky. stuff. That'd be so intense. I wouldn't want that job. No, I don't think anybody would. I think it would take like a real different kind of person. Well, if you want control over how to, uh, you know, what, what, uh, Congress does with your autonomous vehicles, go out and vote tomorrow. Uh, in the scientific <laughs> American. <laughs> in the meantime, we're going to talk about politics a whole lot, but not before we cover this thing here. Turn the fader. Wait, up, oh, shoot. Nope, the <laughs> fader's gone. There it is. Human Factors Cast strives to bring you the best in human factors chatter every week. We pack news, interviews, reviews, and overall fun conversations into each and every product that we put our seal of approval on. But we can't do it without you. You see, the Human Factors Cast Network is 100% listener supported. All the funds that go into running this show come from the listeners. That's why we're giving back to our supporters on Patreon, now more than ever. Pledges start at just $1 per month and include rewards like 24-7 access to our exclusive Human Factors Cast Slack channel, personalized professional reviews, and Human Factors Cast Infinite, a Patreon-only podcast where the topic is Human Factors Etc., we're always updating our rewards, so stop by patreon.com slash humanfactorscast to see what support level may be right for you. Thank you all, and remember, it depends. Okay, so I clearly can't press buttons, but that's okay. But for more dances <laughs> like that, this is just a Patreon. <laughs> yeah, for more flubs like that. Uh, <laughs> but before we continue, I just want to thank all of our friends over at Scientific American uh, and Engadget for all of our stories this week. If you want to follow along, we post those original articles as we find them. You can join us in Slack or all over social media for links. All right, Blake, we have one more story this week, this this last two weeks. It's been a slow couple news weeks. Slow news. Slow news. What right. do we got? This what is, is, a, is this? This is a heavy one, so I'm going to try and not make as many mistakes. Just in time for the U.S. midterm elections. Right? And that when's that again? Tomorrow. Oh, that's Go tomorrow, Nick. Go out and vote. Oh my God. Have you voted yet? So uh, during the confirmation <laughs> hearings of Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh, I don't know if that's his last name or not, a viral photo captured an elderly couple on an uptown New York City train, New on uptown New York City train one, listening to the testimony intensely on cell phone. So the photo was held as an example of the experience of the moment. From all corners came reports of findings that people gripped by the news cycle. People tuned in from airplanes and bars and restaurants, the NYSE, and in a variety of community spaces. They called in their own stories of abuse during news breaks and news breaks during the coverage. 
And there were some medium rumblings about productivity during this event, which raised the question of how much the hearing may have cost employers. But a more pertinent question in today's media grip society is whether employers can afford not to acknowledge nationally transformative events and what are the long-term effects if they do so. So that's a pretty interesting question, and I think it's super important, especially in the political climate we find ourselves in. And they they said it really well. They don't talk a whole lot in the article about social media, but, I mean, we lived in a very media-gripped society. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Go vote. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to say that. I'm going to start with that. Uh, Blake, how do you feel about politics in the workplace? Let me start with that. Um... That's an interesting one. So I, I agreed with some of the sentiments in this article, at least, that it should... I think having taboo topics is silly, and I, but I think the reason that it, it still exists is because sometimes it's not actually a conversation. It's uh, I'm not really actively listening, it, listening to the points you have or the things you're trying to say. I'm actively trying to defeat you, which is not... Not what? a useful conversation. Much like this podcast where you're just trying yeah, to one-up Yeah, I know, just, me. Like, just constantly <laughs> having to deal with this one up and in. Uh, yeah, but I But that's that. how I, I think it's fine. I just think that people get so overheated about it so quickly that it makes it impossible to have real conversations instead of just, like, talking to each other. Look, I'm going to give a spoiler alert here. I talk about politics in the office. Um, and, but it's, and he talks about voting tomorrow. I do talk about voting I stepped into your office multiple times because you share an office with two other people. I do. And yeah, you do surprise. Uh, and so look though, when I, when I come in, I make it a point to come in and be respectful. And like, I never try to influence you how to vote. I just say it's important to vote and exercise your opinion. And here are some resources. Um, and I don't know if that's annoying, but I can certainly attest to having other, uh, staff, come into my office and talk about um, s- some politics issues. Yes, whether aliens are real or not, we're run by the lizard people. <laughs> I mean, it's not far off, let's be honest, but <laughs> at least from my point of view. So I've, I've definitely had them come in and it's unwarranted and um, I don't know, man, because like I, I just don't want to come off that way. I don't want to come up and be like, Look, you got to vote Democrat all the way down because X, Y, and Z Democrats are better than Republicans and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to sound like a like someone who's so overzealous in their beliefs. I just want to empower you to make your own decisions and hope that you will make your own decisions that are the right ones, the morally just ones. Like, I, whatever that is in your head, right? Yeah, whatever that is for any particular for person. For that person. Yeah. But I think I have a problem when people are overbearing with their thoughts and opinions on a certain topic. Yeah. Without solicitation, without solicitation, because it's one thing to be like, you know, what? I was really interested in that thing you said. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Because I'd be happy to talk to you at length about uh, reproductive rights or whatever, you know, like some topic. And if they go in, like it's a careful line that you got to tread. And so. You know, and I have no problem talking about it with people who agree with me politically. So, like, there's that, too. Uh, well, that makes it easy, right? Yeah, it does. Um, but then you get into, like, this group think, and uh, is that right? I don't know. But then you're at the office. Is it appropriate to talk about that stuff? You were saying taboo topics should be – there shouldn't be such a thing. I just think it's silly. I mean, I I do understand from this article's point of view that, yes, it could be impacting productivity, but I don't – we only get better if we talk to each other and we communicate about hard subjects yeah. or at least try to in the best way that we can without like getting, you know, nasty or malicious about it. So I, I don't understand the, I just don't understand the idea of top taboo topics. Cause we just like, how do you even learn or grow from things if you don't talk about them or you don't at least like air it out that it's, it's real or it's a right. problem. Now I do get the point that maybe work is not the best place for it, but, it, but, Nick, what do we spend our lives mainly doing? We uh, spend working. about eight to ten hours a day at the same place with the same people. We right. should be able to have some kind of discourse about what we think politically or whatever we think's going on in the news. But it's it's like you said, it's that careful balance of sneezing during a podcast and not letting anybody <laughs> hear it. And uh, saved it. Yep, saved it. <laughs> uh, but it is a careful balance. You have to. You can't just be you know running into people's office and. Nah. Hey, vote, guys. 
Well, yeah, that's that's Nick's approach. That's my approach. Hey, you voting? It has worked. It has worked. Yeah, you're it's, voting. Yeah, me and two I, others. I think other people are registered. Yeah, there's there, I've registered more than a few, including the lizard person in my office. Lizard people. Yep. In Blake's office. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, what do you think, Nick? I okay. Yes, lost productivity. Sure. I mean, it depends on how your workplace works. We are very fortunate in a place where we can work. Um, kind of these elongated shifts in a day. We can work the number of hours we truly work, right? So, like, if I take an hour lunch, I can just tack that on at the end. If I take a 30-minute lunch, I can just tack tack 30 minutes on to when I normally leave. Um, I can work a 10-hour day or I can work a 5-hour day as long as it all equals out by the end of the month. We're very fortunate to work at a place like that. But there are other places that do the 9 to 5. You have to be on it every second of every day or else you're going to get talked to. And in those environments... All I can say is, man, just afford your employees a little bit of flexibility. <laughs> yeah, because I worked in one of those environments, and it was like you could, and it was one of those where you actually did not know, you didn't know who was listening to you for why and why they were actually talking to you. So sometimes it was, it was more trying to understand like how much work are you actually doing during the day. So making right. sure that you're getting a maximized set out of those eight hours. So yeah, there's in some companies there's no room for people to have you know like personal conversations or any or talk about anything of a personal nature, whether it's like beliefs, taboo topics, blah right. blah, blah, at all. Which I, I, I still think is nuts because you just I don't know maybe I'm maybe I'm completely wrong because I feel like once you get to know people more you may bond with them better and so some of those teammates that you have even if you have opposing views you should be able to you yeah. know understand each other a little better so maybe it helps with your work relationship but I actually know the opposite of that is true in some cases for me so yeah well I mean and and another thing too is that workplaces themselves are starting to take uh, positions on some of these hard hitting topics like the Me Too movement. Now, if, uh, you know, uh, women have a much better likelihood of um, being uh, heard and understood if they come forward with allegations of sexual uh, harassment, assault, whatever it is in the workplace. And oftentimes employers will check the story uh, now, right? Like it was very different a couple of years ago. Women didn't even feel comfortable coming forward with this information because they thought they would be the one that fired. Yeah. Um, and this is a political movement that's happened. And companies are paying attention and whether or not that's for the right reasons or not like i don't know right they just don't want to look bad so they're gonna fire the guy who was yeah there's a lot of that th- there is a lot of that but regardless it's now becoming more commonplace to sort of keep up with the trend and i think that's a good thing uh personally when um companies stand for values like taking off your advertisements from um you know websites that advocate for gun violence uh that's that's another movement that happened and um companies take down their advertisements and i think that's great i i think that's wonderful that companies are actually speaking up and um reflecting the beliefs of their employees the problem is that not all employees agree with those that's positions true. um but you also have like the freedom to work wherever you'd like you don't have to necessarily stay at a company because of like specific value that it has. Now I understand like if that wasn't the case and through whatever means of like, whether it's me too movement or gun violence or whatever it is. And you all of a sudden find out that the people you work for don't hold the same values that you do, or you don't mm-hmm. agree with a company taking a stand. Cause that's a whole different thing. Yeah. Of, it's, it's one thing to talk about individuals. It's one to- thing to talk about groups of people within a company, but like when a company itself is kind of taking on, you know, different political stances and stuff like that. I think we get into stranger waters or different places. Right. But I don't think it's necessarily bad in all cases. That That's the toughest thing I think about politics and any of these like taboo topics, whatever they may be is there's, there's gray all over the place for a lot of it. Yeah. I don't think that anybody can find it. No, not a lot of people like to, you know, think about it that way. I'd rather look at it as black and white. Yeah. I mean, Vote. It's really tomorrow. yeah. Vote tomorrow. Um, it's weird because we started this podcast in 2015, uh, and if you're doing the math, it was right before the 2016 election. Um, was it? Yeah. Man. And months. yeah, and, and I don't know. I like adopted the stance. I was very opposed to talking about politics on the show because the country was so divided and we were new, and I didn't want to alienate any of our listeners. But now I'm like, no, f that. Like we can we can talk about politics. We're talking about it now in a news story. Um, 
It's topical. Yeah, it is. It, it really is. So go vote uh, for what you believe in tomorrow. And, uh, you know, if the time's already passed or if you're in another country, still vote. Just uh, it's obviously not going to be the same time as us, but <laughs> go vote. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. Uh, we want to get into some of these stats. One th- Yeah, I was going to say something. And looking at these stats, I've got some opinions on the stats themselves or like thinking of ways you can actually look at it okay. outside of politics. Uh, so it, it we get like from a specific company since 2016, the 2016 election, people are paying more attention to politics, which makes sense in the U.S. at least. Uh, but I feel like it's like that across the world uh, in some cases, but that's retrospective. But anyway, so we've got like 87% of employees reading political social media posts at work. 80% said that they have discussed politics with professional contacts or colleagues. I think that makes sense. And nearly 50% said that they had seen a political conversation turn into an argument at work. I would that's, expect that to be higher. That's a Well, I was expecting not that high no? to begin with. No. Oh, I would expect that to be much higher. Well, but I'm glad it's not. Well, okay. So it's it's weird the way this is reported. It's seen. So I don't know if that means like I, I myself has been in that or What's the operational I've definition seen of this? other people in the company happen because if that's the definition then like i can yeah like why is that not higher um well also too you have to be careful with that i think because i have a very dark sense of humor as well so you could catch me having arguments yeah. with somebody that i don't actually i'm not actually having an argument with anybody uh, i've seen that conversation yeah i never sense it as hostile because i know your sense of humor and um i know the other person's sense of humor <laughs> too. but it's it's one of these things where i'm i wonder what you would find for other topics about this too, especially like the reading social media posts at work. I feel like that's high for a lot of different things, especially nowadays. Yeah. I mean, we all have this device in our pockets. Yeah. It's very, very drawing is there. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I am definitely guilty of that one. I have read plenty of Reddit posts about, um, blue midterms (laughs) of all things. So, I mean, you know, and and others too, right? They'll post on Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. Um, yeah, it's go vote. It, I like <laughs> the fact that people are actually in this, this. See, this gets a little weird, or it strays from what we were talking about. That eighty percent of people said they have discussed politics with professional contacts or colleagues. You could do that over beers outside of work. It doesn't necessarily yeah. mean it's in the workplace. Sure. But if, and I feel but, like that also makes sense because, I mean, we're spending so much time with each other. A lot of people that we work with are friends and they hang out after work and that kind of stuff. So right. I can see that happening. I can too. Um, I'm surprised. This isn't higher though. I I really am. Because if uh, if you think about it, like you said, they're friends outside of work. And maybe maybe the 20% that don't report this are just going straight home. They're not interacting with anyone at work. They're literally there to just do a job. Uh, I can get that, I guess. I don't know. I just, maybe I'm just in my bubble where I'm like, yeah, the people I work with are my friends and I feel comfortable sharing information with them like that. I I don't know. Yeah, I mean, so to be completely honest, I am that person going to work just to go to work. I mean, you're kind of the only friend that I hang out with afterwards, Mm. but we do a podcast. So that's a lot of the reason, right? Uh (laughs) So I I totally get that right now. I mean, it makes sense. People just going to work to go to work. Yeah. Um, Okay. Well, overall, I think uh, talk about politics. Do it. It's fine. It's good. And and apparently it can cost U.S. employers $1.76 billion in lost productivity. I find that to be a ridiculous number. I find that to be probably credible. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's probably credible because the math they did was pretty low in terms of like the hourly rate and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, it's, it's pretty intense, but what does that really mean? A lot of lost productivity. I still think that we're doing all right. Yeah, I think so. And you know what? If, well, uh, what is it? Is it time for, no, no, no. I was just going to say if employees need to like have that time to feel less stressed at work or more stressed, I don't know. Um, and be a little bit less productive, you, you know, productivity isn't everything you want. A good, you want a good healthy balance. Yeah, you want a good, healthy employee too, and some of that is mental health. So just remember. Um, yeah, I do want to get into the ne- into that next part of the show. What is that? It came from. It came from. That's right. It came from not Reddit this week. It came from Slack. You're expecting me to say Reddit? Nope, I wasn't. No. Oh well, you weren't because you see the 
thing. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we usually do it came from Reddit where we do a community outreach, but this week, since we've been off the air for the last two weeks, I felt like it was a good time to revisit our Slack channel. Um, and you know what? I We've been having some pretty good discussions and posts in our Slack. I just want to cue all of our listeners into... Um, you can think of this as an advertisement for our Slack, but we, we got some cool stuff. So uh, I'm going to leave the last names out. If you want the last names, you could jump into our Slack you and find them join out. Join the Slack. <laughs> but we have Dan who posted a great look at the F-35 cockpit displays um, and uh, talking about looking at all this sensor data and how that provides some situation awareness of what's going on in the environment. And I watched this video. This is pretty cool to kind of see all this data fusion happening. Data fusion. Data fusion. Yeah. I'm so, going to look on yours because I've forgotten the login now. That's okay. Um, <laughs> so you can't talk to Blake <laughs> on Slack because he forgot the login. I'll give you my phone number. It's fine. Uh, okay. Bla- <laughs> you can call me at 858-something. Uh, uh, um, we had a couple other ones in the Slack. So uh, let's see here. Where are we? Wow. It went way up. I don't know why it did that thing. Anyway, we have um, a post from Logan who's been on the show. Yeah. Uh, good yeah, buddy he Logan. Came up not too long ago. He says, uh, it's not really news, but I came across this awesome paper during a class assignment. Micah Inslee drove a Tesla Model S for six months and gave a detailed breakdown of the functions and shortcomings of the different autonomous systems that she encountered. It was a really interesting firsthand perspective on these systems from one of the greats in the field, and it's open source on Google Scholar. Here's the link to anyone interested. So that is out there. Blake, you are laughing up a storm. Why are you laughing up a storm? Because I've got that printed out somewhere in here. I just realized how much of a nerd I am. Oh, you the were The second he like posted it, I went and printed it off at work. <laughs> Did you have a chance to pour through it? <laughs> no, I actually didn't. I brought it in here with every intention, and now I don't actually know where it is well, in this small little space. Let's find it's it. It's not on the wooden it. table, and it's not on the brick wall behind us. It's not on the TV screen either back there. But um, I'm wondering if we can pull out some... Uh, keywords? Keywords. Let's see here. Six-month mm-hmm. period. Uh, mental model issues were found with driver training, mental model development, mode confusion, unexpected mode interactions, situation awareness. Oh, really? <gasps> Go figure. No. Uh, and susceptibility to distraction. So friend no, of the pod. No we can say friend of the pod, right? She's been on the podcast. Um, I think that qualifies. We've interviewed her. Is that a qualifier? That's a qualifier. Are we friends on LinkedIn? Uh, yes. Uh, friend of the pod, Micah Inslee, posted this this uh, uh, Model S Tesla Six month detailed breakdown. So please go check that out. Let's see here. We got a couple other ones of this um, human eye resolution VR headset uh, from Reality Technologies. Mateo posted this one uh, with the specific quote The company's goal to create an extremely high resolution VR headset to be used for industrial purposes. Currently, mega, 50 megapixels per eye. Oh. I don't know if you know what yeah. a megapixel is. No. That's a really big pixel. <laughs> That's a really big <laughs> pixel. Uh, no, so this this is uh, this is cool. I like this for a lot of reasons. One, right now, because of the resolution of VR headsets, at least in their current iteration, um, you get this thing called the screen door effect, where you're looking at it, you can see the lines between the pixels because of the magnification sure, of the screen. Yeah. And what this is promising is some sort of high level resolution, where potentially that is no longer an issue. You're looking at a full uh, screen that looks as detailed as the human eye can see. And if you have poor eyesight, like either you or I, <laughs> then toast. Then this will be even better. Uh, cause you can probably just do the adjustments of your glasses, a prescription in the lenses. I don't well, know. That'd be, That'd be awesome. Cool. Wouldn't that be powerful anyway, Mateo with the awesome stories? That is cool. Yeah. Mateo also bought, uh, brought us attention, bought our attention to, uh, a report by Vision Australia and Monash University Accident Research Center, or MUARC, I think that's MUARC, MUARC reveals 35% of people who are blind or have low vision surveyed uh, either had a collision or near collision with an electric or hybrid vehicle. Oh, goodness. So blind people look out for those ethical now autonomous that's, <laughs> that's interesting. I wonder if that has to do with... Uh, wait, can you read the headline one more time? Yeah. 35% of people who are blind or have low vision surveyed had either a collision or near collision with an electric or hybrid vehicle. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I wonder if that's because they there's a lack of sound on top of the fact that they cannot see them. So the lack of sound, it would make sense for deaf people, right? Because if you think about it, they they can't hear electric vehicles when they're going below a certain speed because the decibel level is so low. 
Yeah, I don't know. We'll just be like a hundred percent honest. I've nearly gotten hit by a like a what is it? A Prius multiple because times you're blind. in my own parking lot because I can't. I don't hear it, and it just comes like zooming by. Yeah, but I yeah. What does that connection have to do with glasses? Oh, or vision. <laughs> yeah. So I would imagine <laughs> that usually, like, if you have low vision, you're trying to cross the street. You're using a lot of your auditory senses to help you do so. Okay. So potentially if something do- is not making any noise and you can't see it, then that's doubly bad for you. And so ergo getting hit by things more often. Right. So if you have better vision, then you can at least see it. But yeah, if you don't have better vision and you're having to rely on auditory cues, you're likely going to get hit by something like that that doesn't make as much noise than if people are paying attention when they're driving. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll go for that. Uh, last but not least, I want to th- well, no, there's two more things that I want to talk about here. Um but we've had several members join the Slack, so welcome, uh, Passacorn C. We have Maggie, and we have Josh, so welcome to the Slack. And then the last story I want to talk about. This one's cool. Mateo also posted this one. He's our aviation guy. He's the man. Um, oh, it's a DARPA one. Woo. Yeah, DARPA and Lockheed have modified an off-the-shelf commercial head co- helicopter to fly itself in typical military missions, including supply runs, medevac, and recon. Wait, I'm confused. It's a remote control helicopter. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the, a the real helicopter. Manned helicopter. It's not. A, oh my goodness, that's insane. Yeah, forty-five uh, non-pilot with forty-five minutes of training was able to to pilot this thing. I want to go do that. Ooh, that me too. Sounds like so much more fun. That'd be real neat. That'd be real neat. Well, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. DARPA is uh, controlling helicopters with. Uh, what is that? Is this swipe technology? What is it? Yeah, it looks like it's just... <laughs> it's a tablet. This it, guy's using a tablet to just control this helicopter. That doesn't seem safe. Well, you have to have 45 minutes of training. Oh, man. Yeah, that'll do... Oh, oh he's got like a little... He's got joysticks and warthog stuff. That's kind of cool, man. Isn't that neat? That is really cool. That's right. a lot of fun. All right. Uh, Giant simulation looking thing. Was there anything I missed from the slack there, Blake? I don't know. I'm looking at the same thing you are. I don't know. All right. Well, you know what? I think that's going to be it for today. Hey, there it is, the music. I am totally ready with all of the stuff. All the cues. All the cues. Uh, Let us know what you guys think of the stories this week. I know we only covered two. Like I said, it's been a slow news week. Um, But there was a lot in the Slack. There was a lot in the Slack. If you're a Patreon supporter, stay tuned for the after show. It's been a couple weeks. We're going to let the walls down. Let this wall down. I, I hear there's a green screen behind this wall. I hear we're going to change it for <laughs> wood instead of bricks this time. Uh, you know what? If you like what you hear and you want to support the show, you can leave us a review. Yep. That thing. There we go. He's really <laughs> excited about reviews. Review. Yikes. On our podcast medium, medium of choice uh, and consider supporting us on Patreon. We'd love that. Uh, and, of course, you can always reach us on our home on the web, humanfactorscast.com. I want to thank Blake Arnsra for dealing with my stuttering and acclimating, reacclimating to being a podcast host. Where can our listeners go and find you if they want to talk about remote control helicopters? Guys, if you like books, you can find me at Don't Panic UX across social media. <laughs> Special thanks to Jeff Olson for our video editing this week. As for me, I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me across social media at Nick underscore Rome. Please take our survey about HFES 2018 bonus interviews. It's really important. Very important. Please take it. Remember to vote. And remember, we got a giveaway starting next week, so please stay tuned. Actually, you know what? I think I might announce that in our Slack first. There you go. So check it out. So go if to Slack. Listen, if you're listening to this, go check out our Slack. Go to Slack. Find the answer to that. Go to Slack. Uh, thanks again for tuning in to Human Factors Cast. Until next time, Blake. It depends. If you like books, go out and vote.